Sometimes I see physics problems and I like them, so I want to solve them. Here is one of those problems, and I think I saw this on Reddit. So here I have two masses connected by strings and it's swinging around in a vertical circle like this. And um, mass one is four kilograms, which is really kind of heavy, but whatever. Uh, mass two is also is three kilograms, and mass two has a velocity of four meters per second at this point. Both the strings from the center to there and from here to there are both half a meter, 0.5 meters. And the question is, what's the tension in the two strings? Great problem. Let's start off with a force diagram for mass one. So if I draw mass one right here, I, I know that there are two forces acting on it. The tension, strings only pull, so I have tension. I'll call that T1. And then I have the gravitational force, uh, M1G. Both of those are pulling down. So that means that the mass has to be accelerating down, and yes, it does accelerate down. Because F net, let's call this the Y direction. That's the Y direction. F net Y is mass times acceleration in the y direction. So this one has an acceleration in the y direction because it's moving in a circle. So remember that the acceleration of an object moving in a circle is v squared over r or omega squared times r. Those are the same thing. Now, which one should I use? Well, I actually don't know the velocity up here. I know this velocity. But if it does say that the strings stay collinear, they stay in a straight line, so it's if this is rotating, then they have to have the same angular velocity. So let's just go ahead and find the angular velocity of mass two, because uh, that's the same angular velocity for mass one. So if it's moving in a circle, this one's moving in a circle of radius 0.5 meters with a velocity v2. So omega is going to be v2 over 0.5 meters. And that would give me my angular velocity in radians per second. So for this mass, I can write the net force equation in the y direction. It's going to be minus T1 minus M1G equals M1 omega squared R. Now, but in this case, R is going to be the distance from here to there. So it's going to be 1. I'm just going to write it as 1 meter. And I would normally do that. Um, and in fact, I don't want to do that. Let's call this 2R. Let's call this R and that R. There. I feel better now. Okay. So can I solve for T1? Yes, I actually can, right? If I know all these values. So I'm just going to add that to the other side, subtract this. I get T1 equals, uh, wait, add that over here. I'm getting negative. Minus T1. Oh, this is minus. That's why. The, the acceleration's in the negative Y direction. So that means it's going to be equal to if I add that, because it's going to be m1 omega squared 2r minus m1g. Yeah. So this is the, the mass times acceleration, uh, and that's the gravitational force. Uh, and you'll notice that it is possible that if you were not moving fast enough, then uh, the, this tension could be in the opposite direction. Would make, you know, it wouldn't move in a circle. Okay, but that's, that's T1. I'm going to, I am going to actually calculate that as a number. Uh, let's just go ahead and do that now. So T1 is going to be mass 1, which is 4, times omega squared, which is going to be, uh, let's get this value. I'm going to actually do it the way people like to do it. Get all the numbers. Move my calculator so you can see it. How about right there? Okay. So let's get this. V2 is going to be 4 divided by 0.5. Oh, I know I'm going to do that. That's 8 radians per second. So that's going to be 8 squared 1 minus 4 times 9.8. Okay, so 4 times 8 squared is 36, right? 8 times 8, no, 64, dummy. Okay, let's just do 4 times 8 squared times 1 minus 4 times 9.8 equals... And I get uh, 216.8 newtons. OK, now what about this mass right here? Let's draw a force diagram for that. Here I have the T1 pulling up, and then T2 and M2G pulling down. So remember that if this 
string pulls down on mass one, it has to pull up on mass two with the same value. Uh, so I can write the F net Y is going to be T1 minus T2, T2 minus M2G, and that's going to be equal to M2 omega squared times R. And it only has the radius of R. Now, fortunately, I already know T1. So I can solve this for T2. So T2 is going to be equal to uh, T, so if I move that to the other side, this is minus also, T1 plus m2 omega squared r minus m2g. And so if I put in my values, I get 216.8 plus 3, the mass, omega is 8 squared. This has a radius of 0.5 minus 3 times 9.8. This is actually easier than I thought. I'm a little disappointed, to tell you the truth. Okay, so let's just plug it in, clear. 216.8 plus 3 times 8 squared times 0.5 minus 3 times 9.8 equals. And I get 283.4 newtons. So... The other question was which string is going to break first. Well, the one with the higher tension is going to break first, right? I'm a little sad. I thought this was going to be cooler. It wasn't that cool. Okay, if you want to do a, a variation of the problem, repeat it for when it's down here. Because now it's down here, gravity is pulling down and down, and the tension is pulling up, but it's still and it's accelerating in the upward direction. So that's a little variation for you.